What is going on, guys? It has been a while. Um, it's Tip is back again. We're doing another, or I'm going to try to do a, a interesting video today, hopefully. Um, I get asked a lot on making carrier specific build videos, and I don't like, I have nothing against making them. So if people keep asking for them, I will end up making carrier specific videos. The problem is it kind of defeats the point of me just giving you a specific build because then if you get beat, I never taught why you built that way. And like, it, it, it doesn't give you any room for like a, adapting to it. Um, and this game, as much uh, to most people's dismay, uh, it's not really a game where you could just have one carrier that beats everything. Um, you can have a setup that checks a lot of things, counters a lot of different things, but nothing in this game counters everything. Um, you can even see it in like, actually, Navy Proving Grounds is here, right? You know, the top players on Navy Proving Grounds in this server, BHC, probably the top alliance in the entire game, honestly. Um, their builds, their equipment and everything, is all orange plus four maxed out everything, right? Plus three there, plus four there, plus four there, right? This is probably the, uh, the if you needed an IX build, just look at this. This is, get every single piece of equipment that this dude has and take it as high to plus one, two, three as you can and up to orange and that's your Nyx build right there, right? Like if you wanted to look at it, just go look at it. He's the number one player in the game. Um, so my thing is I would like to go over and show people how to counteract stuff um, and make sure that your build is as... Uh, optimal as possible. And notice, like, even that top dude, right, he doesn't just have the Nyx. Like, he uses it because it kills the majority of stuff. But, like, if someone comes in with a Helios that has all maxed out orange plus four, everything else, the Helios is going to kill this thing, right? This thing isn't the end-all be-all. It'll probably beat everything else. And as most people know in this game, the Helios isn't really that strong against anything other than a Lincoln or a Nyx, um, because it's specifically designed to counter dodge. So, you know, then he has a Hades that's all maxed out orange plus two plus four everything. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, so, for example, like, this is a maxed out Hades. Like, all of the builds are slightly different, but, like, the top guys in this alliance, right, they have two guys in the top three. I bet this, the build is the exact same or very similar. Uh, yeah, you know, okay, oh no, he has the Jack Torpedo. It's a little bit different there, but plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four, plus three. Right, like it's almost the exact same build. If you want a good Nyx, steal either of these dudes build. This dude uses different subs. Um, so my goal in this video is to make it so that you guys can see how I would build any carrier um, based on a pool of equipment. So the first thing, um, all of this information you can find in the handbook. So in order to find the handbook in the game, go to your aircraft carrier base, the equip button at the top here, and then handbook, boom. This is a library of all of the equipment in the entire game. Missiles, power, uh, engines, torpedoes, nav units, phalanx, search radars, everything. Um, so the thing that I'm trying to go over here is, yeah, no, obviously it only shows like the thing that you have lit up, but it shows you all the stats and everything of, every, of if you max everything out, what it would look like. So you can see everything that's available here. Um, the first concept that I want to go over, and this is so... I only showed you that so that you guys could kind of find the equipment for yourself because every piece of equipment on here, obviously it's an Imperial missile. It comes from the Imperial, but if you click this little, uh, not that one, where is it? Um, there's certain ones. So for example, like if you go down to this guy, like the ALS smart skin, um, if you click this, it tells you, you can get this equipment by following, breaking the smart skin, or upgrading the smart scan, upgrading, you know what I mean? Like, it tells you where you can get these things um, for anything, actually. So, like, if you clicked on, you know, the Enterprise Phalanx, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, get from breaking the Enterprise. What do you know? From disassembling it. Um, that's another thing. Please, uh, especially free players, please stop being afraid of breaking carriers. The only way you're going to be competitive is competitive as a free-to-play player is if you focus on one carrier and one carrier only. You can get a bunch of different equipment to cover for different options, but please only build one carrier. Stop building a million different things. It's not going to work. It's not going to help you. You're just going to get your butt kicked repeatedly. One well-built carrier will beat an infinite amount of weaker carriers. 
that's just the way that this game is set up. So, um, you know, or not necessarily like any, but like if you're building like 10 carriers at 50%, one carrier at 100% will beat all 10 of them every single time, no matter how many times you repair them. So you might as well break a bunch of care, focus on one that you like, break all of the other ones that you don't use for holding islands, use, having garrisons or attacking world bosses, or gathering, break everything else, all the, all the different combat ones and focus on one. That is the first advice that I will give you on building any carrier, focus on one. Um, but I compiled a list in, a note, in my notepad here um, at the top I'm going to go over and at the end of this video, this is all going to be filled out at the bottom and I'm going to build a random carrier um, just from the ultimate carrier list or really any of them. Um, I'm going to look through mastery, subs, chips, planes, and equipment plus some key psionic zone people and build a carrier in this video. But here, this top list is what is called or what I would consider, I, I combed through the high end book. This is the meta equipment. Okay, this word meta. Um, it's used in video games as the, it, like, it comes from, like, if someone's doing a meta-analysis, like if Harvard University did a meta-analysis on, you know, weight loss, they would look at a bunch of different weight loss studies, combine all of them into one, and then tell you the results on, like, what the best is. Um, so meta in video games is after a bunch of different people tried a whole bunch of different stuff, these are the pieces of equipment that actually are helpful right now as the game is currently. This list is subject to change based on how the developers change the game. If they change the way that critical strike is calculated, all this could change. But as the game is right now, here are the items in every category that if you get them, I would, depending on the carrier that you use, you should keep these if you get them. If you break something and get one of these, you should keep them. Um, unless you're building, like a, if you're a free player and you're building a JFK, you have no use for a Lincoln Radar. Just destroy it and use the Lincoln Radar shards to uh, like break the Lincoln, break the Lincoln Radar that you get from it and use the shards to pick up more Shandong torpedoes from the, the carrier disassembly boxes. Like it makes no sense for that. But this, this whole list is what I would consider the best equipment in the game. Um, and everything else that's not on this list, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that there's it's very, very specific use. Um, you might find use for it against one opponent, but it's not going to be widely used against everything else. It might specifically counter one person you're running into, but most of these are going to cover all of your bases. Okay. Um, so first and foremost, R-77 is only going to be good for a aircraft attack setup. You wouldn't use an R-77 with warships. You would use any of these other ones for warships. Apocalypse missile or is mostly used in dodge builds. Like there's some things that are specific, like you're not gonna put an apocalypse missile on an Agaris. It doesn't usually make sense. You can, but it doesn't make sense. Um, so just all of these missiles having them in your inventory will allow you to build a variety of different carriers that cover a variety of different situations. Um, torpedoes are probably the most versatile I would say um, if, you know, Tortoise is on here just for specific Nyak setups for dodge, it's the only torpedo in the game that gives you defense, which benefits off of Nyak's deflector armor. So you get more dodge from this torpedo, which is why it's on here. Um, but there's different uses. Like a Shandong torpedo is amazing against most things, but you wouldn't use it against a Nyak's because you couldn't hit it in the first place in most cases unless you have a Helios. So what can you do if you break a Helios and you're going up against a dodge carrier and you don't and you're using a JFK well you can slap your Helios torpedo on your JFK and now it uses one of the abilities of the Helios torpedo is that it uses overall attack to give you more accuracy and now you might be able to take out that Nyx um, and then against the next fight maybe the next time you go into the tower you're probably going to be matched up with uh, another JFK well, then you would take the Helios torpedo off because you don't need the extra accuracy and you would go back to the Shandong torpedo. 
right? So you would swap based on those different situations. Um, but on this list, like I said, all of these things are useful in different situations. Not all of them are useful in every situation. Um, but for the most part, this is the list of equipment I would pick from. Here are your missiles, your engines, your torpedoes, navs, phalanx, and radars. Oh, I didn't put the... there. There you go. Um, so, that being said, all of this equipment is good if you have it. You can keep it. It doesn't make sense in every case, but it does make sense for the most part. Most of these things are going to be good. Um, a lot of it's situational, though. Again, similar to that Dong versus Helios torpedo differential. Um, you wouldn't throw a Nyx uh, phalanx on a JFK. That doesn't make sense. It's a very the Nyx phalanx is very good on a Nyx or an Imperial or a, a Nyx or a Lincoln. It's not very good on pretty much anything else, right? So like everything is situational. So I can't answer like, oh, this is the best thing. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to go back into the game now, and I'm going to go on to the ultimate carrier setup um, and pick any of these guys, how I would build it. Um, I've been asked the most probably about a Nyx and an Imperial and an Apocalypse. Um, I like the apocalypse. I'm going to use the apocalypse for the video. So first thing that I'm going to look at are these three stats. So these, this, whenever I'm building any carrier, I'm going to look at what it is innately good at. It's good at overall attack, so it's got a 45% increase to overall attack at SS, so the evolution for it. Um, percentages are typically better than just flat plus values. So like plus 100 or plus 200, 45% is most of the time better. Like a percentage is in general better. Overall blockade reduces aircraft and warship attack, so it, it directly increases their final attack after all the calculation. Um, that's actually another video entirely, the different types of defense. Um, overall blockade is one of them. Overall blockade is really, really strong because it reduces their final attack after all of their other attack has been calculated. So whereas something like armor um, or last stand goes against a specific damage value in final damage, overall blockade after the final damage is calculated, overall blockade reduces the final damage, which is why sometimes it's impossible to kill apocalypses. Like you just do like two damage repeatedly and it's annoying. Um, so I'm gonna base this off of the special edition um, as well, just because of this extra Apocalypse Guardian. It doesn't change how the build's going to look because it's still basically last stand. Um, but I'm just going to use these values for the video. Um, so yeah, last stand. Apocalypse Guardian just gives you last stand plus it reduces damage from taken from burn, biochemical missile, and corrosion. And these three things here, burn, biochemical missile, and corrosion, why they're always grouped together, they are additional injury debuffs. So anytime that you like the Agaris, is using, oh, it has a thousand additional injury percent. Well, it's going to do more damage with burn, biochemical missile, and corrosion. If you can eliminate these three, the Agaris doesn't do as much damage. Ta da! That's why the Apocalypse is really good against it. <laughs> um, anyway, so basically, and it does that by 40% of your last stand. So it doesn't matter, this just gives you an additional resistance. It doesn't matter what the resistance is because it's still based on your last stand. Um, so we're going to build for that. The back to the notepad over here. So uh, I can't spell apocalypse. Sure. Um, okay. So the reason why I have the things that I'll pick in order like this, um, specifically mastery first, is because it is the most random out of the things on this list. Um, the reason why I always start with mastery build is because it's random. Like, for especially free-to-play players, you can't really choose what mastery you get. You have to just kind of go towards something and see what you get. So I'm going to build. I'm going to have two different builds or two different subs, chips, planes, equipment setups based on one of two masteries. I'll, I'll make two builds. So if I go back here, 
Um, and let's say just because I feel like it, this apocalypse is just going to be a basic aircraft setup. Okay, so I'm going to go for, I'm going to look at mastery. And now on this account, I already have stuff. Great. But if I go to manufacture mastery, um, I'm going to just say I want, you know, Bismarck. Uh, I'm going to go with Bismarck. So these defense shells, um, typically you want the purple one because the purple one gives you access to column attack over here. Um, and then you would technically want, if even if you're using the apocalypse for aircraft attack, you probably would want last stand, right? Last stand slash burn over here. Um, right, because it'll help you keep the ships on your carrier, or like if you go into a battle with full warships, having extra last stand is probably going to help you more than having barrier, only for this, only for this one, okay? Most aircraft setups, <clears throat> you're going to want to just use barrier because it blocks an attack. Um, now the problem with barrier, specifically getting like a lower barrier one, like one of these that just attacks one, yeah, it gives you barrier, but it only blocks one attack per turn. And one attack does not mean one plane. One attack means one instance of damage. So for example, a Xeon H20, a really common plane, uses, has the that uh, additional injury skill burn on it. So when a Xeon H20 attacks, it does flat damage based on all of its, uh, I don't have one on here, but okay, so I'll just use TU95, sure. Um, it does flat damage based on your level, range, attack, and quantity. It does flat damage here. The other instance of damage specifically, actually, yeah, I'll just do it on this. So it do, uh, the Platinum B2 does damage on based on your range, attack, and quantity. It multiplies all three of these and does damage uh, specifically to, uh, it multiplies these two, attack and quantity, and does damage to that specific slot, that specific slot, that's what, that thing. It only says multiply by range seven because it hits seven different slots, all right? Now, if there's only, say they have no warships left and you hit one, two, three, each one of these slots is going to take, this one is going to take two instances of damage because there's two here. This middle target is going to take three instances of damage, and this one is going to take two instances of damage just on the attack. The big benefit on the Platinum B2 and why this is perfect for this video is because it has all three additional injury skills. Corrosion applies first and it's going to increase your damage of additional injury by 19%. So it's going to increase both of these by 19%. Okay, or the amount of damage that it'll do by 19%. Right? And notice that there's a, you know, biochemical missile says it's probability to poison the target for 19% of attack damage. So what it's going to do, it's going to do the damage the attack damage and it's going to take 19% of that and add it back to biochemical missile and deal a separate second instance of damage. Burn, it's gonna do the same calculation and do a third 13% instance of damage. And because they had 19% corrosion, it's going to increase both of these by 19% damage wise. So technically, this one, this one plane, when it goes by, is going to do three instances of damage. It's going to do its regular damage, its burn damage, and its biochemical missile damage. So going back to the mastery, and this is another thing um, that's important, it blocks one attack. So you only block one of those instances of damage. The other two still do damage to you. Um, so that's why things like the Eternal Light or whatever that have three attacks per turn or the, you know, the EC Tiger that has six, or I think it's actually a lot. I think it's, I think it's three as well. Um, the ones that block more instances of damage are better. All right. Um, and you can use that to your advantage by swapping planes around. But again, that's another advanced video. So use the mastery first or figure out mastery first, specifically you could either use barrier or last stand on this and whatever you get you deal with right sometimes you're going to get reload and that's going to be really bad but you still want to put it on because it gives you way more health which is going to have to you know it's going to help keep your uh your ships alive longer so it's going to help you do more damage 
um, as a uh, as a carrier. Yeah, as a it's going to help you stay in the fight longer. Just having more warships there to block more attacks for you. And that's in any aircraft setting, your ships are there just to block attack. Um, so let's just say we got unlucky and got reload. Okay. Um, instead of barrier, because I believe reload and barrier are on the same one. So let's say we got unlucky and got reload. Uh, now, the next thing that I would be wanting to do is I would want to get either last stand or barrier on my carrier, because I want last stand, but I also want barrier. And if you have both of them, it's going to optimize how long your, plant, your, your ships are there, so you're going to be able to stay in the fight longer. So then... When I say I got reload by accident, then I would go back and then my thought process is now I'm going to find subs that match that. So I go to submarine factory and subs, you can do one of two things. You can use subs for defense or you can use subs for offense. Um, for an aircraft setup, you typically are going to want to use offense subs and just put defense stuff on your carrier and call it a day and just let your ships die. Um, but if I, what I'm looking at here is most likely I'm just going to say use the U2A here um, and say screw it on your ships and let them die. But I'm going to comb through and look for another option. I think there are a couple that would give me maybe a better chance here. I think the Type 216. Yeah, okay, perfect. So Type 216 gives Stimulant, which is an attacking buff. It also gives me barrier on my carrier and the first row of warships and bulletproof coating, which gives me more defense on that. It's not last stand, but it still helps. Um, so this will allow your carrier to live longer. It'll allow that second row of warships to live longer, and it gives you one attacking buff, which will help for your damage for um, your planes, your aircraft. So type 216 is definitely a, a good uh, option in this specific setup. Um, just looking through, last stand, that's good. This is an interesting option, and it gives you repair. It's not exactly the best for whatever, like you might, you know, that might not be the greatest, but repair is a good option, even for a, an aircraft attack setup in this case, um, because you can then, if you pick defense on your subs, you use offensive chips. If you pick offensive uh, subs, you pick defensive chips to make your build a little bit better. I'm gonna come through, yeah, I wouldn't use a debuff one, permit class. This is also an interesting one. You could absolutely use a permit class as well. Even in an aircraft attack setup, you would just have to make sure that you're using um, precise strike, stimulant, and Hawkeye as chips, um, which leaves you pretty vulnerable to uh, other aircraft setups because you could just get restrained. So if you're using uh, those three as chips, I would remodel the permit class sub to add purify to it to make sure that you're um, you still get purify in your carrier. Um, and that actually you could use permit class as like a hybrid setup there too. Um, deep sea, yeah, I wouldn't use deep sea there. Libra, this is interesting. You could absolutely do this as well. Um, this gives you Hawkeye, last stand, and barrier. Um, so barrier and last stand here. Uh, barrier and last stand on the first row, which helps keep your ships alive, and it's defensive on your carrier, plus it gives you Hawkeye, so your chips could be Stimulant, Precise Strike, and Purify, and that would be a really solid setup. So even for an aircraft attack setup, this is a good option. Um, Star of Wealth, <laughs> this takes care of all of your offensive capabilities, Stimulant, barrier, Purify, or Stimulant, Precise Strike, and Hawkeye, so you easily could just... Um, put last stand and barrier on your car last stand barrier and purify on your carrier to give yourself some defense and allow you to get your attacks off um, so that's also an easy one there um, you could use this for an aircraft attack setup it's this is just like if you're looking through you just kind of make choices between your chips and your subs because they work the best together um, if you're combing through all of them they're going to give you a wider variety i guess of um yeah if you look through it's going to give you more options by piecing together subs and chips at the same time or type 096 easy um easy damage so hawkeye stimulant it's a really good sub as well you would just throw defensive chips on your carrier and just let your warships die so it depends um in my opinion what i think would be the best here 
uh, for just damage, especially because we're in an aircraft setup and it doesn't necessarily matter too, too much. I personally would go with this, with the Type 216. Okay. Um, you could go with a Type 216 or you could go with a U2A. I think it just makes it a lot easier. U2A is a free, to pl or free player's dream sub. Gives you Hawkeye, Stimulant, and Charge, which are three amazing aircraft attack abilities. You could throw um, you could throw Last Stand, Barrier, and Purify. Um, or Last Stand, Precise Strike, and Purify. Or Barrier, Precise Strike, Purify on each slot in chips. And you would be fine. You would just basically, you would just be sacrificing your boats to deal a couple rounds of damage. Um, and the Apocalypse has good defense anyway, so you don't necessarily need them. Um, but just to kind of show an overall build, this isn't necessarily the best one, but this is how I build a carrier. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to say I'm going to go three, three two, type 216s. Okay. Just because now, if I do have reload, the other benefit to doing using a Type 216 is if I did get reload mastery, well, now my second row of warships, I'm not entirely out of the fight. It's almost like a hybrid setup. I can still focus on getting all of my damage off because I can put um, Hawkeye, Precise Strike, and Purify chips on it, and I can get all four of the damaging buffs still on my plane. Um, I can still use get Purify on it to get my attacks off. Um, instead of getting restrained, and my ships aren't useless now. It's actually a pretty decent option, but that's that first row of ships has barrier, last stand, stimulant, and reload. It's a re it's, I mean, that's those are the main things that you want in a warship setup as well. So now you're kind of going hybrid, but you're making it work. Um, I think that's a, that's a really solid option for a build anyway. So I'm going to say you got mastery reload. My subs, in this case, I would pick type 216 chips. Are going to be purify purify goes on every carrier in every slot i don't care what setup you use purify is the most important chip um hawkeye yeah hawkeye i think and precise strike okay uh because you get barrier and bulletproof coating uh the type 216 uh, you could if you're not fighting you could have a hawkeye chip in the back to fight against dodge carriers or you could swap this Hawkeye, um, it, like this slot. You could put four chips on it and just swap out based on the enemy. You could have a last stand chip here too, okay, um, to give yourself a little bit more uh, sustainability on your ship. So you could swap out. If you're fighting Dodge, use Hawkeye. If you're fighting anyone else, you could use last stand to give yourself a little more staying power, okay? Planes, um, standard aircraft attack setup for free players uh my favorite <laughs> sarugi times three for free players you want to use pretty much three sarugis um up until you can start swapping them out for like a tu-95 a red baron and a venom um the developers have been pretty good about throwing for like all of the aircraft shards that have been saving up for a while they actually threw some six star planes in there um my one of my favorites being in on this specific setup i personally would like red baron slot one for pv this is all for pvp by the way this is not for pirates red baron slot one venom and then to 95 Okay, all three of that's the, the, I call this the Holy Trinity. Um, the only other one that you could add in there at some point, other honorable mentions, Steel Predator, Xeon H20. These planes are not worse. <laughs> They're just different. So this, these three are the Holy Trinity and any other attacking plane you can slot in. Um, but Red Baron, because it has Dispel, Uh, always goes first. Dispel always goes first. General rule for aircraft setup. Actually, that's a general rule for anything. Dispel always goes first. Um, but anyway, any, really any uh, debuff plane. And I have a whole other video on attack planes and stuff. Equipment, here's the fun part. Uh, for any aircraft setup, I'm just going to pick my favorite go-around. Uh, here you go. And this is going to be really fast because I've done this so many times. 
for this specific carrier for the apocalypse the only thing that i have to take into account uh, is the overall attack okay if it has overall attack you use ford engine if it has aircraft attack like the starry river you use starry river engine okay for an overall attack carrier in an aircraft setup you go r77 this is standard this is just like right off the bat like there's no thinking involved here because i've done this so many times this is just a standard setup Ford attack engine uh, for torpedo. Ideally, you would want to go for Dong, but if you're a free player, you could go for Jack torpedo. That's fine. And have Helios. If you get one for a free draw, break it for Helios uh, just in the back that you would not use normally, but you would use the Dong torpedo or the Jack torpedo. Um, for the Navarre, to st uh, against pirates, you would use the APS-50. Uh, against in PvP, because this is a PvP video, you would try to get a six-star smart skin. If you are a free player, Jack Radar is fine. Okay, uh, Phalanx, here's one that matters. Okay, so for you, for Phalanx here, uh, for this type of player, you would use either the Jack or the Abyss Phalanx. I'm looking through my list. Or the Apocalypse Phalanx. So you would use one of three. Jack, Abyss Phalanx, or Apoc Phalanx. Any of those three are, are perfectly fine. You can swap them in and out based on the person that you're fighting. Um, in my opinion, out of these three for the Apocalypse, the uh, Abyss Phalanx is probably the best. Um, just because it gives you the highest defensive stats and it gives you some last stand. Jack gives you last stand too, and Apocalypse gives you more last stand than both of them. Out of these three, I mean, if you have it, use the Apocalypse Phalanx. Um, but if you don't, Jack of Jack Phalanx or Abyss Phalanx work fine. Um, and then for your radar in an aircraft setup, here are your options. Uh, you want to use on this one for free players, JPG-1. For not free players, Agaris Radar, that's totally fine. Uh, you could use Shandong, I wouldn't, It's that's more better, that's better for a warship setup. Um, Enterprise I wouldn't use, Truman you could use. Um, Agaris Truman, you could, I wouldn't use the Truman, but you could. Death Eyes is fine here. JFK is fine here. I wouldn't use it on this, though. Um, but your best bet, honestly, your best one is probably the JPG-1. Okay. Um, key geniuses for any aircraft setup. MacArthur slash Charles de Gaulle. Uh, what's his name? I... Musashi, I don't want to be racist here. <laughs> Musashi Miyamoto, I think that's his name. Uh, he's insanely good at everything. Uh, and then, uh, please, I need to spell. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Ta-da! Those are the three that you would want in your military zone. Um, for other ones, you honorable mentions, Roten Gen. Um, in all, in no order, in no specific uh, thing. That's what you want your military zone to look like. But all of these are really, really good ones. Mondo Salazar, Robot Bad, Megalodon. Archimedes or yeah, Archimedes probably in that case. Yeah, um, those are those are some pretty good ones to start off with. I think that's that's a good starting point. Um, if you can if you can pick up those geniuses in their respective places and level them up to talent level sixty, that's another key one. Talent sixty ASAP. This right here would be a pretty solid starting Apocalypse Special Edition build. 
as you go through some inter the the big probably the biggest thing that I want to go over. I know this is a long video. Uh, this is a really important one though. Probably the biggest iteration or the biggest thing in this game is going over iterations, right? And if any of you have worked in IT, um, it's basically figuring out <laughs> what worked, what didn't work against a specific enemy and changing stuff around until you figure out what went wrong, watching the replays to find out what went wrong, where you died, where you got hit, took too much damage, troubleshoot why, and then change some stuff up, try it again. Do not be afraid to blow up the carrier attacking pirates. It's a game. It's just a video game. Um, try different stuff out. Swap out different chips. Swap out different subs. See what works better for you. See what works better against different enemies. Um, but this is just a super, super quick rundown on how I would build any specific carrier. And that's just my thought process. So I thought the thought process was going to be really important for people here. And this is just building it from the ground up. Now, this is like, if you were to go later into planning, you know, you're not going to immediately have access to all this. So use what you have access to and do the best. Try to follow the same thought process. Use the best resources that you have at the time. Don't be like, oh, well, I'll never have that because you will. You can get everything that any player that spends money for free. It just takes a significantly longer period of time. All that money does is buy time. Um, even if you're not buying literal time in the game, uh, everything, all it does is buy time. You can get everything exactly for free. It just is really, really hard. Um, and you have to be really good at managing your resources. So take into account what you have now. Take into account what you need find what in-game currency buys what you need and save <laughs> play events play the game hit pirates and you will be fine you'll do really really well this is specifically for an apocalypse and honestly i've never built an apocalypse this is just where i would start if i was doing an apocalypse with a um, an aircraft setup and i started from nothing uh so if i you know if there was a starting point like all right say you already have u2a subs well then just build from there because you already have it so you already have barrier mastery okay we'll build from there right like what else do you need to make it work the thing the only things you need to make aircraft setup work is aircraft damage a purify chip and try to get as many attack buffs on your carrier as possible without leaving yourself too open to just get one shot by something else that's it that's an aircraft setup so um I know this video is really long. I hope this helps. Um, and yeah, more videos to come in the future. Later, guys.